I'm so happy that y'all in the joyous mood right now that we can make y'all smile because smiles are definitely needed right now. But also what's needed is power, is justice. We need justice. My name is Christopher Lockett. I'm all the way from Dayton, Ohio, and I know it's so many names to name. I know it's so many names to name, but one name that I want to make clear is John Crawford III, the young man who got shot unjustly at Walmart, at the Beaver Creek Walmart. I represent for every male that they thought wouldn't make it to see 30 years old, I'm standing right here in your face. What you thought I wouldn't make it? I'm here. John Crawford III lives on. And every soldier that we lost in the struggle lives on. As long as I'm here, we're going to live on. Get to that. The mother of Tamir Rice from Cleveland, Ohio. line up behind the families and march to the Capitol and have the rally. Everybody is a marshal. Keep everybody in line behind the fam Ferguson crowd. Are we all ready to march? Are we here together? One voice, young, old, white, black, Latino, to say all of our lives matter. Don't let no provocateurs get you out of line. Let's begin and follow instructions. The family's up front. Purpose. Let me tell the people in the media something right now. There's a lot of pain on these streets. But where there is pain, there's a purpose. And we are here for a purpose. And we are going to be here together. This is intergenerational. We who are older and a few gray hairs on our chin are proud of the young people who are standing up and speaking up. Let them hear you. You're the John Lewis's. You're the Fannie Lou Hamer's. You're the people who started this because it's you who are targeted and you have a right to stand up. Hands up. Hands up. I can't breathe. Ladies and gentlemen, let us do this. Let us all grab each other's hands in unity. Every single hand, every single hand, whether you are in, there's no importance. I don't care if you got a PhD or no D, GD or whatever you got, MD. Grab somebody's hand. When there's a funeral, we all bow our heads and hold hands. And we pray to our God or we pray to whoever we want to. Hold your hand. Every hand should be held. I'm going to bring forth now for prayer the chairman of the board of directors of the National Action Network, Chairman Richardson.
We've gathered here today because we believe in the value of all human life. We gather here today because we know that we've got to move from protests to problem solving. We've got to go back home and take on the issues and bring unity to our communities so that we may transform behavior and transform expectations. And so today, join together in our diversity, join together in our multiple faith expressions. I want to ask you to join me, whatever your spiritual grounding is, I want us all to focus now on our spiritual center, on the thing that gets us through the night, the thing that holds us when everything lets us go, the thing that gives us hope when despair is all about us. Let us pray. Oh God, our mother and our father, we thank you for the legacy of struggle that we embrace in this hour. We confess our pain, we confess our frustration, we confess that we have to come back here time in and time out, generation after generation, seeking justice. We are tired, but we won't give up. We come today, God, asking you to bless these families, these families who gathered around their hurt, their lost children, their pain inflicted by insensitivity. We pray God for this nation that is on its way to catastrophe unless we turn around and come together and speak hope to each other. We thank you for Al Sharpton who's been a clear voice in a difficult time. But not just his voice, the multiple voices of men and women all over this country, the voices of our young people, the voices of our children. We thank you today, God, for the voices that are being heard. And we thank you for those who put their feet on the pavement today, who walk through the streets and who by our very presence demonstrate that there is an unsettling spirit in our midst. We ask God that you would drive it out. Drive out the things that would destroy us. Drive out the violence in government hands. Dial out, dial out the violence in the hands of our brothers and sisters that black on black crime will not continue to be. Drive out the pain, the frustration that leads us to turn on each other. Drive out police officers who act unaccountability, without accountability. Drive out government officials and corporate leaders who are insensitive to our pain and our struggle. And then God opened the window of hope so that we can believe in tomorrow. Help us to believe in tomorrow. Help us not to be so encumbered by the burdens of today that we fail to believe in tomorrow. We love you. Make us whole. We are broken. Make us whole. Amen. Hands up. Hands up. Hands up. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. We say I can't breathe not just because Eric Garner lost his life senselessly in the streets of New York from a chokehold, an illegal chokehold. We say, I can't breathe because we are being suffocated by a system of Jim Crow justice in America. A system that allows a police officer to go free and a young black boy to be dead on the street. That allows the murderer of Trayvon Martin to go free. We say we can't breathe because we are tired of Jim Crow justice in America. And we are out here today to say that we will fight back and we will stand up. 
1911, in 1911, Miss Nelson and her son hung from a bridge in 1911. They say we've come far in America. I say not far enough. In 1955, Emmett Till was murdered, dragged from his home and dumped in the Tallahatchie River. They say we've come far in America. I say not far enough. They say that Jim Crow is dead in America and I say Eric Gardner is dead in America that Mike Brown is dead in America and there's no justice for people of color and poor people in this country and until there is justice for all there'll be justice for none anywhere there is injustice is a threat to justice everywhere in this country where we are. I want to say that finally, we are not just out here because we want police reform. We're not just out here because we want police to wear cameras. And though we think that'll help, we're not out here just because we think the police department is the problem. We're out here because there is a systematic and consistent effort to dehumanize and criminalize people of color in this country that has been going on for decades in America. We are out here because, yes, we want reform in the police department, but we need reform in Congress. We need reform in our states. We need reform in our cities in our institutions, in our colleges, we need reform. And until America realizes, realizes that they have to invest in every citizen in this country, it'll always be a problem that this country will never have peace, will never have rest, will never have justice until all people are treated fairly and treated equally and treated like human beings. God bless you. Keep up the struggle. Keep hope alive. Keep fighting, keep pushing. Uh, how y'all doing? My name is uh, Carlos Ball, and I am the brother of Kerry Terrell Ball Jr. Now, I know a lot of y'all might not know who he is, but see, they never, St. Louis City Police never wanted the nation to know about this story. They shot my brother 21 times, man. Why with his hands up? Standing over him with 18 of them bullets, man. Bullet holes in the ground for his back when they went through his back. And since the day he died, I've been determined to get his story out here, man. I ain't been playing. This didn't broke my mama and my daddy down, and we still fighting and protesting. So I'm going to put it on my shoulder. I'm gonna, if my parents are hurt right now, with that being my brother, as long as there's breath in my body. I'm going to keep on fighting, man. I'm going to fight with these families, with all these families, because we're going to get justice for them. So I want y'all to remember this name. Y'all know it now. It's Kerry Ball Jr. And we're going to keep on fighting, man. Because the prosecutor in St. Louis did not indict the officers after six months of so-called investigation. But we ain't stopping. We're taking it to a higher authority. Because we refuse to be content with them telling us no and to, to start trying to make us accept these civil suits. We don't want that. We want indictment. Send them to jail. I love y'all. Justice for all.